Actually, I got a New Year's series that I'm going to begin this morning. So I couldn't wait till, uh, you know, the 7th or whenever that is. I don't know whatever the next Sunday is, uh, the first, you know, January, whatever that weekend is. But uh, anyway, uh, actually, it's not the 7th. It'd be like the 4th or something like that. Anyway, whatever next Sunday is, uh, we're starting New Year's right now. Amen. And I believe the message that God's put in our heart, I believe this is something I'm so stirred because this is life in me. What I'm going to begin to give you is such a revelation in me. And God, uh, I'm always praying about, okay, where we're going, what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we were praying about the summer and this last summer and where we're, and I'm always, and what's really been even a scripture that's stirring in my heart is where the Bible said, I think over in Hebrews, it says, obey them that have the, have the, have the lead over you, who teach you and instruct you uh, because they give an account for your souls. That's really been strong in my heart lately because I, I want to be faithful that when I stand before the Lord, I have to give an account for your soul. That's, that's a sobering thing for me as a pastor. And I even think about that, and he says, and do it with joy. So, so it's not something that, you know, you can kind of get worried about it, because some people, you, worry, you start worrying about them, like, well, Lord, you know, if, if i got to give an account, they ain't doing too good. But to give an account, and so, but what that, I really, uh, my, my concept of what that means, and do it with joy, is that my responsibility as a pastor, number one, is to teach, feed the Word of God. Teach people the word. And number two, be an example. I mean, those are things that Paul told Timothy. And so I am always, okay, what do, what do we need to hear? Where we're we going as a church? And, and we're, I'm a very vision-oriented person. Uh, and so with, with what God, God can put something on the inside of you, and it can be real big. And you look at your circumstances or where you are or what, what and you say, God, are you, you want us to do this, you know? And so we're going to talk about um, the, the title of this New Year series is called The Box. Everybody say The Box. I got a little graphic up there for you if they can put it up on the screen. But we're going to call this The Box. And what I mean by the box is overcoming uh, the limits, overcoming the barriers, breaking through, breaking out of the borders and the boundaries. I mean, there's so many words and different things that, that create pictures. If you think of a limit, if you think of a border, if you think of a boundary, if you think of a barrier. Uh, so we're going to break into this new year talking about the box. Uh, what does your box look like? How do you get out of your box? And I'm going to give you some different pictures and just things from the Word. And so I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 4. And while you're going to Proverbs 4, let's pray that God will give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, we just thank you this morning. As we get into this series of messages that you've put in our heart, Lord, I'm already just, uh, just excited, stirred in my heart about what you want us to, to, to see and to understand and to know. So, Lord, we ask you this morning, give us eyes to see revelation knowledge from your word help give us ears to hear hearts that are open and receptive lord so we can get out of uh man-made limits we can break out of out of limits that we even set up on ourselves. and so lord thank you that we're going to go uh, you're always wanting to stretch us even in the old testament you said lengthen the 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 the, the cords and the tent pegs and stretch it out lord you're always even jabez prayed lord enlarge my borders there's nothing in 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 us that wants to stay the same it's a godly desire so lord stir in us these things show us how to begin to break forth moving forward in these areas of our life as we talk about our box or what is the box and and give us an examples of it so lord we thank you for it help us thank you for it and we'll give you all the glory and the praise in jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. all right you ready for this how many got your Bibles? You ready for this? Now, I'm telling you what, if you'll get a hold of what I'm saying, your life will never be the same. I'm telling you, I'm going to give you some things that, that uh, I already know we're in this for at least, gosh, at least six weeks. I got, I'm already like, okay, like, man, we got to go this way, we got to go this way. And I'm going to show you how to get outside of, of even the box of thinking that you're in and how the Word shows us to do that. Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, watch over your heart. Everybody say, my heart. Now, what does that mean, your heart? That is your spirit, man. How many of you seen the, the movie The Matrix? You ever seen that movie The Matrix? Anybody seen Nobody seen that movie The Matrix? You know what the word matrix means? Matrix means womb. So when it's like there's something that's inside of something. And, and inside of your spirit, inside of your heart, are things that are very important. All right? So he says, guard your heart or watch over your heart. Guard it. Everybody say, the Amplified says, above all that you do, guard your heart. Be diligent about it. Guard your heart. That means what's coming in, you've got to guard it. 
What's go, because what's coming in is going to go out. Jesus made a statement. He said, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks or leaks. So it's important. Jesus said the, the good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. So what's on the inside? How many know in your life every day, on Monday morning, when you get up, what's on the inside is going to ooze out? What's in you on Tuesday is going to ooze out. When you get squeezed on Wednesday, what's in you is going to come out. All right? So we're talking about, he says, guard your heart. I'm going to take my time with this because there's so much here. He says, guard your heart with all diligence for, now notice now, from it. What? Your heart. Your spirit man. From your spirit. Everybody say, my spirit man. See, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So he says, now, if you backed up right here, he said in verse 19, he said, he said, my son, attend to my words. Look at it. Attend means to look at it. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Here's a, here's a whole other sideline right here. Incline your ears. Uh, look at it. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. See, there's something that affects your heart. Life affects life. Death affects life. So he says, he says, attend, he said, because it's life to your, he said, these words, as you meditate on it, look at, tend to it, incline your ears unto it, let it not depart from your sight, keep them in the midst of your heart, they are life to those who find them, and health to your flesh. Listen, God's word is medicine, it's health to your physical man. It'll make you strong when you're feeling weak. When you, when you, when you get the sniffles, if you know how to take the word and apply it, you can kick the sniffles right out the door. You understand what I'm saying? Any sickness, any disease, you can kick poverty out of your life. He said, because it's life, health to all your flesh. And then he says, so guard your heart. Because what's coming in is going to come out. He says, for out of your heart. Now notice he says, it flows the issues or springs, depending on what kind of translation you have. Out of your heart flow the springs of life. The issues of life. I have one translation. I wrote it down here. I came across a while back. Something like the African language. It says, guard your heart with all strength for all, for all of the things in life are there. All the things in life are there. It's coming out of your spirit, man, what you're putting on the inside. Now, as I did a little study on this word here, this issue, springs. The word, if you just kind of looked it up, you'd find out that the word springs or issues means borders. Now, watch this now. It means boundaries. So guard your heart, for out of your heart flow the borders, the boundaries, the limitations of your life. Or what kind of limitations, borders, boundaries, what I mean, you, what you put on yourself. So that via, everybody say, the box. So let me put it like this. According to your heart, what's in your heart uh, creates your box. Everybody has a box. You, don't, you might not understand. Every one of us have, have limits that we put in our lives. Those limits are either self-imposed. They can be, those limits can be man-imposed. In other words, what people have said about you or they tell you you can't do it, you need to stay in your box. Let me tell you right now, the devil will do everything he can to keep you in your little box. Don't get outside. The, don't get it. No, you, no. And, every, and people will get mad at you when you try to get outside of your box. You understand? I'll just recently, I uh, think Friday night, we watched the movie The Maze. Has anybody seen the movie The Maze? Oh, I thought y'all, we had a little more, a few moviegoers. Anyway, well, if you haven't seen the movie The Maze, it's a good movie. Anyway, it's, it's you, know, if you, you know, it's clean. But, uh, but it's a bunch of kids, and, they're, and they've been put in this maze. And, uh, and for the most part, you know, it's, it's interesting because you've got, you got, you got a few guys that are called runners. And so they, they, when the doors open and, and during the daytime and they run and they're trying to figure out the maze and then they come back. But you've got, you got mindsets in there that some people, they don't want to leave. We're, called, we're supposed to be here. You know, and the thing that, and what is it that's holding them? It, there's, in other words, there's a little square area that they're contained. They're in a box. And then they've got a maze. They can get outside the box and they've got to run through the maze. Well, the runners do anyway. But some people, they don't, they don't even go out there because they only have a few people that can be runners. Well, see, that's the way the devil says, well, there's only a few people that can go do that. You, you, that's not for you. You've got to stay in the box. And a lot of reasons people don't get outside their box, and, and we'll talk about it, it's fear. And see, so you got, you got these, little, these little things that are out in the maze that, that do bad things to people that get left out in the maze and get caught. And so what happens is nobody wants to go out into the maze. They don't, they, we're just going to stay in our box because it's safe. And listen, if you don't learn that there's sometimes you got to take risks in life, if you just want to stay in your little box and be safe, 
That's all you're ever going to see. That's all you're ever going to know. So we're talking about the box. Everybody say the box. So he says, guard your, guard, guard your box. Because out of your box, it's going to flow. It's going it's to determine how big your box is getting. Am I helping anybody here this morning? Now, there's limits of fear. We just met, you know, there's different things that limit people uh, from expanding or getting past the limits, going past the borders, breaking those barriers. There's uh, maybe p- failures. Well, sometimes, well, I fail, so, so I'm just, I'm not going to try again. I'm going to stay in the box. Don't want to do that anymore. Maybe, tra- and here's the big one, traditional limits. People grow up with traditions, you know, and whether, whether there's things in the Word of God, well, well, I never knew that, or I never was taught that, and, and so they stay in their own little box. They stay in their own little, you know, because Grandma did it. That's what, you know, why do you go where you go? Well, Grandma and Grandpa went to the Baptist church. Mom and Dad went to the Baptist church. Well, fine, as long as there's life in the but if the Baptist church is dead, you better get out. And I'm talking about Baptist, man, there's no, there's no, I'm not picking on anybody. You understand? If the, if the non-denominational church is dead, you better get out. If there's no life, you better get out. Because God's a God of life. If there's no life, then God's not there. Then you're in a dead box with dead people going nowhere. There's your dead. It might even look like life, but it's not life. I mean, there's some things that look like they're alive. People look like they're alive, but they're really dead. You hear? There's, there's, there's boxes. That we're, we're contained because of knowledge. You know, you, you're only going to go so far. Based, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So, so, I mean, what you don't know can destroy you, hurt you. You know, there's, uh, there's uh, so many things. The unknown, just the unknown. Not, I, well, I don't know, so I, don't, I just stay where I am in my box. Well, you know, if you're going to start a business or you're going to do certain things, you know, there's going to be stuff you don't know. There's going to be things that you have to learn. And so that's where you, you, got, to, you got to bust through that box. You got to bust through that mindset and different things. So we got so much to talk about. But we've all set those limits in our lives. That's why we're calling this the box, all right? So in my heart, what I've got in my heart for this new year is that we're going to take the limits off of God. We're going to take the limits off ourselves. I'm going to challenge you. Take off the limits. Take off. I mean, we put God in a box. Listen, you can't put God in a box. Are you kidding We'll talk about, I'll show you how people put him in a box. But you got to take it, you got to take the limits off of your situation. You got to overcome some barriers. Amen. I mean, you know, it wasn't that long ago that they actually finally, what is it, Steve Yeager, that broke the sound barrier. That was a barrier. And what, in order to break the sound barrier, that airplane had to go faster than the speed of sound. And when he broke the sound barrier, it went boom. Anybody ever heard one of those before? Well, listen, when you break something, by the time it goes boom, guess what? The devil ain't going to know what happened. And you're going to be like, whoo, I'm out the box. Amen. Stretching forth. Are you following me? Now, let me give you a few things. Let me, let me just explain to you. Here's a limit. A limit is a boundary. Here's some definitions. It's the point, the edge, or line beyond which something cannot or may not proceed. So you got this limit, the point, the edge. Sometimes we come to an edge of something and we just, it, it's something, it's either, it, spiritually, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, we just got, we just bump up against it and it's the edge, it's the point, and we just, it's the line beyond which something can or cannot proceed. And many times the reason it cannot proceed is because of what we have in here. What we're thinking. The final or furthest confines, bound, or restrictions of something. If you look up some different synonyms of limit or boundary, the, the, the verbs mean to keep or contain within a, specific, a specified area. To keep, think about that now. To keep or contain, if you have a limit, is to keep or contain within a specified area. Again, the box. The enemy wants to keep you in the box. I can give you all kinds of examples. Think about the Apostle Paul. I was thinking about this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. He said, he said, because of, he said, um, he said, because of the the measure of, of revelations that he had, he said, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh to keep me from being exalted above measure. And he said, in order to keep 
in order to keep from being exalted above measure, there was given me a thorn in the flesh. Well, listen, to keep me from exalt, that, in other words, the de- that was the devil. Because of the, the, the revelations that the apostle Paul had, the revelations that you can read in Romans and Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians, you can read because of those revelations, the enemy wanted to put Paul in a box. He was trying to keep that revel- keep him, actually it was like to, to hinder his sphere of influence. And so everywhere Paul would go, there would be crowd, mobs of Jews that were trying to attack Paul, stoning him, beating him, everywhere he was going. And that was that thorn in the flesh. And Paul even said, Lord, get rid of this thing. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient for you. He said, they said my grace will get you out of that box. There's no devil in hell that can keep you in your box, that can contain you. Jesus even said in Matthew, uh, what, 16, he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church because you can't keep the church in a box. You can oppress it. You can do everything you can to attack it. But he said, my church is going to grow and expand because that is the will of God. And it's his will that you expand. You understand what I'm saying? God, the devil can't keep you in your box. Look at your neighbor and say, he can't keep you in the box. Now, limit refers uh, principally to establishing, here's some more definition. It refers principally to establishing a maximum, as in, listen, quantity, degree, space, or time beyond which a person or thing cannot or may not go. As I was looking at that, thinking about that definition, I was thinking when he said quantity, I thought about how much. See, the enemy is is going to, oh, well, you know, that's too much. The enemy, people try to put a limit on you. Well, that's too much. Degree, well, how high? Well, how high can you go? Well, no, you can't go that high. Space, how big? Well, no, that's too big. You You can't have it that big. Says who? God will never say, well, that's, no, you can't have it that big. He'll, he'll say, according to your faith. God never, God's never going to look at you. Oh, well, that's too big. You're pressing too far. You're going too long. No, he'll say, according to your faith. That means what's in your heart. Faith is located in the heart. What you're putting in there and you begin to grab, grab, grab a hold of. In other words, so he said again, limit refers principally to establishing a maximum, as in quantity, degree, space, or time, beyond which a person or thing cannot or may not go. So there's your box right there. So long, so high, so big. Amen. He can only contain so much. So that means, in other words, we got to deal with this box, don't we? Everybody has them. You go, well, Pastor, I just don't believe I have a box. No, listen, you're in a box right now. It's called the world. I mean, how about that one? I'm going to get to something. I'm getting ahead of myself here. But, but, But the whole world system is a box. And God says, you're not limited to that box. Hello? See, now, let me see. In a nutshell... A limit, a boundary is something that basically says, you stop here. The devil will try to put it on you. The world will try to put it on you. People will try to put it on you. And you will even try to put it on yourself. No, you got to go right here. You got to stay right here. Now, listen, there are good limits, city limits. Because that means a city limit is a good thing because that tells the city what they're going to do and how far they're going to do certain things and roads and, you know, all the different things that they do. You got speed limits. And everybody say it. I mean, so there, there are good limits. I mean, there's good things. There's things that, there's, there's boundaries for kids. I mean, that, those are important. Listen, kids need boundaries. You need to let your kids, that's why you bust them. Nuh-uh, stop right here. Because that's for their good. There's some things that are, they're good boundaries. I mean, kid, you know, there's, there's boundaries, there's, there's dating. Come on, somebody. Relationships. There's boundaries. I mean, there are, there are good, uh, you know, when it comes to just wisdom, there's, there's good limits. Good things. Everybody say good things. You know, if you go, if you, if you come over to my house and all of a sudden, and I wonder where you went and I catch you back in my bedroom, you cross the limit, cross the line. Come on, somebody. You getting in my refrigerator? Now, if you're my kids, you come get in the refrigerator, right? But, but there's, I mean, there, there are certain boundaries and limits so, and that are good. I mean, they're just, there's, there's wisdom there in it, all right? But there's a limit. I mean, you know, if you sold everything that you had and you gave it all to the poor, you sold it all, uh, and, and, you, and you said, I'm going to bring this, I mean, there'd be a limit to that. But this is not about, uh, but I mean, but if you, if you waited a little bit, how I many things can change, right? But, but this is not about natural limits. We're talking about, we're, that's what I'm excited about. We're talking about faith here. We're talking about the supernatural limits. Come on. We're talking about, here's where we're going with this, overcoming. Now, how many of you know 1 John 5, 4? 
Who knows 1 John 5, 4? See, this is when I get concerned about it. I say, Lord, uh, I got, I'm giving a watch over their soul. See, I got to teach people the word. 1 John 5, 4. See, you need to know 1 John 5, 4. It says, whatsoever or whosoever, whatsoever is born of God. How many of you are born of God? Let me, let's, let's find out. How many got a hand? Let me, how many arms you broke this morning? You're not going to do nothing if I tell you to. Who's, whatsoever is born of God. Now watch this now. I'm going to get somebody happy. You sports people. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes what? Well, everybody just put it in your Bible. Put the box. Overcomes the world. There's a system of the world. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the box. Overcomes the world. Even our faith. Come on. Everybody say faith. How many know without faith, Hebrews 11, 6 says you cannot please God. Without faith, you can. That means when you get up on Monday morning, you better be saying, I am a faith person. Amen. What does that mean? I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm not walking by my feelings. I'm not walking by what I see. I'm not going to be confined to the box. Are you here? So think about it now. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, in light of that, in light of the box, in light of limits, borders, boundaries, barriers, we are overcomers. If you're born of God, you're an overcomer. I said you're an overcomer. Well, when I get up on Monday mornings, I don't feel like an overcomer, Pastor. Yeah, but if you just knew my situation, I don't feel like I'm over. Quit looking at your situation. Quit looking at you. Quit looking in the mirror. And just look in the mirror and say, I'm an overcomer. Now, this is important. Stay with me here. This may be as far as we get this morning. I don't know. I'm just taking my time with this. But now, now, think about this. How many of you know what the Greek word for overcomes or overcomer is? Hey, we got some studious people in here. If you look up, you just little strong, or did you little study, you would find out that the word overcomes, or overcomer, comes from the Greek word Nike. N-I-K-E with a little psh, swoosh right there. Above the E, little psh. Everybody go psh. So that's how the psh is right there. So it means Nike. So whatsoever is born of God overcomes or Nike means to overcome. That's what that Greek word is. Now think about this just a minute. And when it comes to overcoming the box, the Greek word overcome, you got to get a revelation here. That simply means you could just get up on Monday morning and say, I'm a Nike man. I'm a Nike woman. So when you put your sneakers on, when you get your little tennis shoes on, you get your workout outfits on, and you got the little Nike check right there. I'm a Nike man. <laughs> Just walk in the kitchen. Honey, I'm Nike woman. What does that mean? What are you saying? I'm an overcomer. Everybody say overcomer. And you got to shout it out. You got to shout it. I'm an overcomer. I am, I am Nike man. Just walk in there. Just, just. <laughs> catch you by surprise. Just walk in the office and go, I'm Nike man. I know everybody's going to look at you like you fool. But it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. It's what you think about you. It's what you know who you are. See, Jesus defeated the devil. And when he defeated the devil, how many know when Jesus defeated the devil, he proclaimed it loudly. Did you know that? I mean, he demonstrated the devil's defeat and he bragged about it. He bragged about it. He shouted about it. Smith Wigglesworth, matter of fact, when it comes to shout, I was thinking about that this morning. Smith Wigglesworth said some people would be giants in the faith if they just had a shout. Did you hear that? Some people would be giants in the faith if they just had a shout. Sometimes you just got to, when they, you just got to, when they, remember when the children of Israel, when they took that wall down, they did it with a shout. Faith has a shout to it. Victor, vi think about it. victory. That's what Nike is. It means victory. I'm coming to that. But it means overcoming. It means conqueror. It means victorious. That's who we are by the blood. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about knowing who you are, and you're just letting it rip. Nike, man. Because you know who you are in Jesus. See, God wants you to start shouting who you are. He wants you bragging about it because he wants to deliver you from the box. He wants to deliver you from the limits in life. 
The borders and the boundaries that, that are either man-set, pre-set, whatever they are. See, everybody has limits. We all have them, barriers. And you might know or you may not know what they are. There, it might be love-life limits. I don't know. Financial barriers. Fi- it might be food. It might be physical. Well, well I just can't. I just can't. Well, you got to change your confession. Because <laughs> Cain never could. Sally never would. All right? So, I mean, think about it. You're an overcomer. When you got born again, you didn't go from being a lost worm to a saved worm. All right? You got raised up to reign. You're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. That's where, you, that's where your position is in him right now. So that's why 1 John 5, 4 says you're an overcomer. Overcomer means, I said it, conquest. It means success. So if you declare, hey, I'm Nike woman, and you say, I'm successful. It means victory. Everybody say victory. See, that's who we are. Now, somebody, they did a, some type of competition, Nike did, and that some woman gave them the idea for this little swoosh, and they were going to give her just a few, few dollars for it, but they decided to give her stock in the company. They come up with this. Remember, remember when they kind of came out with the swoosh? Remember when, remember what was the basketball girl's, Marsha, I mean, no. Cheryl Swoops. Well, think about that. I mean, she banked on that. But when they did this little deal called swoosh, you know what swoosh, swoosh means? Everybody go swoosh. You know what swoosh means? Swoosh means leave them in the dust. Everybody say leave them in the dust. Now think about that. Remember in Genesis 3, 14, God told the devil, remember what he told the devil? He said, you're going you're gonna to eat the dust. When that snake, he said, when, that, when the devil came in there, he said, part of the curse, he said, you're going to eat the dust. How many know when you think of yourself and who you are in Christ, what he's raised you, called you to be, you're an overcomer, you just tell the devil, devil, lick my dust. <laughs> I'm talking about knowing who you are. I'm talking about bragging about it. That's what Jesus did. You understand what I'm saying? I think about it. In Colossians 2.15, the Bible says when he disarmed the rule, you know what disarm means? Stripped. He disarmed the rulers, authorities. He made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. In other words, somehow in the spirit realm, the Bible is basically when Jesus was raised from the dead, he took the devil and all of and he just paraded them before heaven and said, I have victory over you. And now guess who he gave it to? He says, whosoever is born of God overcomes, conquers, succeeds is victorious and we do it because of the blood we do it because our testimony jesus bragged about it he wants you shouting about it and he wants you to know this morning going into this new year there are no barriers there's no limits in god and there should be no barriers no limits in us now think about ephesians 3 20 let me give you the amplified version for time's sake ephesians 3 20 i've got it up on the screen it says notice now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly that already sounds like getting out of the box right super abundantly far over and above all that notice all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers desires thoughts hopes and dreams god is able to do it according to what something that's working on the inside of us that means something is stirring in the box something in your heart something's moving around in there Something's working in there. You understand what I'm saying? Think about what Jesus said in Mark 9, 23. He said, all things are possible to him who believes. You know what believing is, right? That's action. Believing that what God said. We're talking about his promises. Again, you're walking by faith, not by sight. Now, go with me over to Psalm 78. Take a look at this. This is real important. Psalm 78, and i got to start figuring out how to wind this down. Psalm 78. Now, watch this. Now, real important. Psalm 78, verse 40, talking about, this is a psalm talking about the children of Israel, the ones who didn't go into the promised land. These are the ones that stayed out in the wilderness for 40 years. Think about it. God's, uh, God told uh, Moses, send out spies into the promised land, and he sent 12 spies out. They were out there for 40 days. Ten of them came back with an evil report, doubt, doubted, said, we can't do it. And it, and it spread through the camp, and everybody, all the rest of them said, you know, we, well, we can't do it. But Joshua and Caleb said, we're well able to go do it. We can possess it. We can do it. God's with us. But think about it. Because it spread in the camp, and the rest of the camp believed, God said, for every day of doubt, I'm going to give you 40 years in the wilderness. That's what we're talking about here. See, if you're going to get out of your box, if you're going to break some borders and pass, go beyond some limits and do some things, then we're going to talk about how to do that. 
But if you're going to do that, it's going to begin right here with believing God. You can't separate faith from it right here. Now watch what happens. In Psalm 78, verse 40, it says, How often they provoked him in the wilderness. Talking about the children of Israel, when God brought them out of Egypt, they provoked him in the wilderness, and they grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God. Now notice, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Everybody say they limited. Now how did they do that? How did these people, limit, here's, listen, see a lot of people think, well, we're just, you know, God's sovereign, whatever God wants to happen in our life, it'll happen. No, that's totally false. That's a traditional whatever kind of wrong thinking you want to call it or where it came from. But listen, if, if, if everything that happened in our life was the will of God, then you can't limit him. But God responds to faith. But it says here, they limited him. How did they limit him? They limited him with their doubt and unbelief. This is important here. Oh, man, this is so important. Really, you could call this just a, a, a doubt problem. Now think about it. If the word limit means to set boundaries, then they put it, they set a boundary on God. They, they limited God on what he could do. Jesus said he could do no mighty works in his own hometown because of their unbelief. They limit, the people in his own hometown limited him because of the unbelief. He marveled at their unbelief. Jesus always, he got excited about faith. So, you, we, you know, we always have to stir things up when it comes to these things because I'm going to show you, this is, going, this is really going to help some people here. Think about it. If, if the word limit means to set boundaries, and if, and if we set limits or boundaries on God and that grieves him, that means, that means we're grieving God when we doubt him and put limits on him. We're grieving him, and he doesn't like that. You follow me? But see, see, God wants us to have the best. Some of you don't believe that. I said, God wants us to have the best. We're his children. We're his kids. He's partnering with us. He's given us the, he, he wants the best for us. But when we limit him, we grieve him. And, and here's, here's a big key. If you back up into verse 8 here of Psalm 78, you find out one of the big reasons. It says they didn't prepare their heart. They had a heart problem. What did we start this message with? Proverbs 4, 23, guard your heart. For out of it flow the issues of life. They had a heart problem. It says in verse 8 right here, and not, he, he said, Don't be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. I looked this up. The t today's English version says, A generation of weak purpose. Whole generation of weak purpose. I mean, we got some purpose in God. We got some things to do. Listen, you can't afford, they had, they had a heart problem. That's the bottom line. Hebrews says, don't, don't have an evil, unbelieving heart. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as they did out in the wilderness and they provoked him. But listen, he said, he said you got to begin to take the word of God and you got to mix faith with what you hear. Because that, the purpose for the word is to get you outside of the, the world system of the box and, and your own thinking and stuff that's going on. And bottom line is you can't afford to put God in a box. And I'll show you, I came across this statement years ago. I think I got it from Dake. Dake has a whole Bible with all kinds of notes. If you want a good study, no, just some crazy notes in there. I mean, get a, get a Dake's Bible. But he said this. He said, if I limit the promises, I think that's why I got it from Dake. He said, if I limit the promise. Now, I mean, you know, the Bible says all the promises of God are what? Yes. That means whatever promise that you find in the Word, God doesn't say no. He says paid for. So when you get a hold of one of those promises, and again, it's got to get down on the inside of you. Matter of fact, let me explain it like this. If you don't have some type of vision, a concept formed by the Word of God, illuminated in your heart, your chances of enduring may be limited. Think about the picture. That's why Moses, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, I think it's Hebrews 11, uh, I don't remember, what, Hebrews 11, 20, something like that. It says, by faith, Moses, fearing not the wrath of the king. He left Egypt, not fearing. See, again, fear holds people in their box. By faith, fearing not the wrath or the, uh, uh, of the king, he left Egypt, not even knowing where he was going. I mean, that was Abraham, not knowing where he's going. But he, he considered, in other words, it says he endured, doing what he did to get out of the box, he endured as seeing him who was invisible. That took faith. It takes faith to see him who is invisible. See, that we're talking about, a, this is a faith subject, and that's why I'm excited about it. Because I can see this thing. Faith is, faith is a sight. It's an inward sight. And you've got to get a hold of this here. And so think about it. If I limit, Dake said, if I limit the promises, 
They're all yes. God's promises in my life. I limit, if I limit the promises, I limit my faith. If I limit my faith, then I'll limit the supply by limiting God to give according to my faith. Listen, everything God gives you, he gives according to your faith. So if I limit, my, limit the promises, I limit my faith. If I limit my faith, I limit the supply. Everybody say the supply. If you limit your faith, you limit the supply. Because God gives according to the supply of what? Your faith. Are you with me? Did you catch that? Because he gives according to my faith. All right, think about it again. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. Proverbs 29, 18 says where there is no vision, the people perish. I like to say it like this. Have you gotten in your life simulator lately? You know, pilots that are training, they have simulators. They get in, they can learn to, they can learn to fly by in this. Well, you got to get in your, you got to get inside. You got to get in your life simulator. Amen. You got to begin to get the word and again, get, get the, the matrix of God, the womb of the spirit and begin to see what God wants you to do. See what he wants you to become. See what you can have. See where you can go. And listen, I tell you what, it's, 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 it's out there. It's, it's, it's above and beyond what you could ask or even think. According to, again, what's working in you. So think about it. The thing that limits God, here's the deal. The thing that limits God quicker than anything is going to be your mind. Everybody say, my mind. Again, we think in terms of the box, our mind. We think in terms of limitations. We think in terms of the barriers because we're looking at the financial statement. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at our natural abilities. We're look, you know, we have all these things in the natural that we look at. But you've got to know him on the inside. You've got to have something. You've got to have the vision. You've got to have the picture on the inside. You've got to see past that. I mean, think about it. I like, uh, well, maybe we'll go to it later, but the message translation over in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, where it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination nations, and every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We're taking every thought captive through the obedience of Christ. The message translation says it like this. We're, we're destroying barriers that have been erected. There's barriers in there that you have to bust to get past and move beyond. And, many, and most of the time, nine out of ten, I mean, there may be a few things, but it's, it's, it's going to be what's happening on the inside of you. It's your faith. Walking out. You ever heard the phrase, man, that blew my mind. Man. Blew my mind. Well, that, that's because your box couldn't handle it. You ever say, man, God just, God just like Donna said a while ago, man, I'm just I'm beyond words. Well, whoa. God just is better than you think he is. And that'll blow, he'll blow, come on, say, look at somebody say, God wants to blow your mind. <laughs> yes, he does. Come on, say it again. Look at somebody say, God wants to blow your mind. And it's so important to understand this. Now, last story. There's, there's, there's a story in Numbers chapter 11. And it's the same group. Now, now, how many know, the Bible says in the New Testament, you've got to get this, the Bible in the New Testament says, uh, the things that happened in the Old Testament, children of Israel, things, things in example, he said they're examples for us, that we shouldn't be like them. And how many know flesh is flesh? Boxes are boxes. Everybody's got their boxes. And you, and, and you have to, in, in a, that system, again, just the world. And in Numbers chapter 11, the people, they're complaining, you know, they come out of Egypt, they, listen, they were slaves. They had it rough, but they get out. They're free now, but they're in the desert. And they don't have some of the things and the luxuries. Just because, listen, listen, when you try to break out and do something new, you go, there, is so, there is sacrifice. We're going to talk about some of these. Man, this is going to be fun. I mean, there's, yeah, you, you. it's work. It's effort. It's stretching. It's different things that we've talked about, things that we know about. But the people, they're complaining of hardships, and, and they're getting tired. We're tired of this manna. Angel food coming down. Think about it. Every day God's feeding them miraculously, supernaturally. And, and we're tired of this. We're tired of the manna. We want some meat. We want some meat. All right, so you know what the story is. So Moses goes to the Lord, and he's, got, he's burdened about it. He, as a matter of fact, it's really funny. If you, Moses basically, he goes to God. He said, God, he said, why, why am I dealing with it? He said, I didn't ask to do this. I did not ask for this, you know, and I feel, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm carrying this here. Lord, what are you going to do about it? And so then the Lord says, and it's funny, verse 18 through 20, God tells the people, he says, okay, he says, okay Moses, tell the people, consecrate themselves because and get ready to eat, get ready to eat meat for a whole month. 
I mean, they've been complaining, just eating this manna. He says, you're going to eat meat for a whole month. Now, Moses, it's interesting, Moses doubts God. Listen to what he says. And Moses said, the people among whom I am are 600,000. Think about that. And you're fixing to eat meat for a month in the wilderness, in the desert. Don't tell me God is limited. He provided water, food for 40 years. <laughs> The people among whom I am are 600,000 on foot, yet thou hast said, I'll give them meat in order that they may eat for a whole month. Should flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to be sufficient for them? Or should all the flesh of the sea be gathered together for them to be sufficient for them? And the Lord said to Moses, is the Lord's power limited? Amen. <laughs> in other words, he said, am I limited? He said, now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. In other words, I'm just going to blow your mind. Because I know you, my you little pea brain can't handle it, but I'm fixing to show you. I'm going to show you what I can do. Amen. I'm fixing to blow your mind. How many like to have somebody, have God just blow your mind 2015? Come on. Amen. He wants to. God. He wants to. And he will if we'll give him something to work with. He, 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 it's hard for him to work with your little pea brain. <laughs> but that's why it's not limited to your brain. It's what's in here. Yeah. It's your heart. It's your spirit. It's, the, it's that wound. In there, what's going on on the inside? See, your mind says, man, this is big. It's too big. The box says, whoa, no, it's too big. The cancer's too big. The debt is too big. Everything's too big. The issues are too big. Let me show you something. I know you know the story, but I'm telling it anyway. See, I got a revelation a long time ago, and this helps you understand why I, 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 have, I just, and I still have to repent, even knowing some things. How many of you heard my big candy story? I got just enough time to think, get a quick version in. My second year at Rama, Ben was a little over a year old. Wave your hand over there, Ben. He's over there. Ben was a little over a year old, so he, he hadn't been walking long. Jessica was about three, about three. Wave your hand, Jessica. Jessica was about three. My oldest son, Bracken, he's down in Houston. He was about four and a half. And uh, we, we were, on, we were on, a, on a limited budget, real limited Meaning, meaning it, 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 we, we, were, we were using our faith for everything, and, 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 and it, was, it was stretching. It was stretching us, everything about us. I mean, my wife and I, that, we, we talk about it. We, we, went to, we went to Long John Silver's for our anniversary, and the fish was cold. I was so mad. <laughs> Long John Silver's, for, boy, that was big. That's stretching it right there, ain't it? We didn't buy bubble gum. I mean, we gave, I mean, we gave groceries. That, that's how we sold. We gave groceries. We sent our missionary $10 a month, and we tithed. We did, but we were stretching. And, and so, we, you know, things were lean. Things, we, were believing, we were believing for money just to pay the rent, pay the, the bills. And, uh, and I was working. I just got this, this job that I'd been believing for, for. You know, actually, I wasn't believing for that one. God worked that one out. I just followed him. But so I'm, I'm in the best job finally the last six months. And, and I told the kids one day, we had some aluminum cans. We had two bad, two big old gallons, gil, black gallon bags of, uh, full of, of aluminum cans that moved with us. I don't know how we were saving them or why. I guess, I guess when you pull, you save everything. And, and so, so we had these aluminum cans, and, and, and they, they, moved, they, they made it to Broken Arrow with us from Wheeler. I don't know. I don't know why. We had these cans. I told the kids what I said. Hey, come out here and let's smash up these cans. Let's take them to the recycling place. And whatever we get, whatever money we get, we're going to go blow it all on candy. So we got out. We worked. And, and there was a recycling place right, just right around the corner from us. So we went down. We got, and I think we walked away from there. We, we had about $10, $10, $11 from all those aluminum cans. <clears throat> so we went straight from the aluminum recycling place down to the get and go. Stop and rob, what I call it. And uh, so, so we go in there, and I said, all right, guys. I mean, you got a little bitty guy. Think about Ben. He's just barely one, barely walking. Jessica, three. Bracken's about four and a half. I said, all right, guys. And, and our, kid, our kids, they don't like sweets too much today because they never ate it growing up. And, uh, but anyway, I said, we're going to. I said, we're going to spend all this money, all the, we're going to spend it all on candy, so y'all get whatever you want. So here they go, we're coming in, you know, and, 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 and you got all these little gum, bubble gums, and Jolly Ranchers down low, and you, know, you work your way up to the candy bars, and all this, all, I said, y'all get whatever you want, man, we're going to spend it all on candy, woo, this is a new day, we got $10. <laughs> now, 
And so it didn't take long. Their hands are full. Load it up. I said, uh, and I could tell, I mean, you know, everything stopped at that point. The limit was there in terms of what they could handle, what they were holding. I said, oh, uh, I said, y'all want anything else? They're like, hands are full. No, today is great. <laughs> they didn't think about going and putting it up on the counter and going back. I mean, they, you know, they just, their hands were full. Everybody's happy. Can't hold anymore. I mean, they're full. So I'm thinking, they have not exhausted everything I've got. I said, this, this really, I mean, I could tell by just looking at what they had. We're not, we're, not maxima, we're not maxing out this 10 bucks here. But they weren't pushing the limit. I'm like, well, I'm going to go get icy. I was going to spend it all on them, but I thought, well, I can tell on this. I'm going to get icy while I'm here, you know. They don't know. <laughs> I'm going to spend it all on them. I'm like, I mean, think about the perception and the concept that, that they had at that age. I mean, now if I said, y'all get whatever you want, you got a credit card? <laughs> you know? I mean, so, but that concept, that, that's the box. At that age and where they were, that was, I mean, I can't hold anymore. They didn't think, oh, I, could I ask and put this, can I get more? I mean, that's just where they were. That was, it was holding. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just taking the experience in. I'm going to get my icy wheelie. We left with change. I'm ready to blow it all. I was ready to go out with not one penny left and spend it all on my kids. So we got home, and men, they run in the house. They're going to go show, my, show mama, whoa, look at the candy, huh? And I was walking across from the front door over to where our kitchen was, the dining room table, and I hit the middle of the living room, and, and just on the inside, I mean, God does, you don't have to hear God by an audible voice. God speaks, and you know it. Jesus says something, and you can know it on the inside. And all of a sudden, what I heard him say to me, he said, that's the way you do me. And as I thought about that and I, that that changed my life because I thought up to that point I, w- I was really trying to use my faith I'm really stretching here and we were we were living in the nicest house we'd ever lived we I mean we were, I had a choice of two rental houses at a certain point and one was 475 one was 525 the guy owned both of them but the 475 one had a porch swing I said if I take the 525 can I have the porch swing from the 475 house he said yeah I think we can do that because I saw the hooks I'm very detailed Going to one house, I saw the porch swing. Going to another house, I saw the hooks. And I'm thinking, okay, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. And I didn't have a job. So, I mean, we're, we're going through, you know, in a year and a half into this thing, believing God, in the will of God, doing what he's called to do, stretching on all ends, all sides, kids, I mean, everything, you name it, new, new babies, I mean, new everything, everything, stretching everywhere. And, and God's telling me, uh, that's the way you do me. And I got it. How many of you got it? He's saying, I got so much more for you that I will will spend. I have already spent the promises, everything. He said, but really, it boils down to you got to get outside the box. You got to get out of this mentality. Number one, I'm better than you think I am. I'll do more than you think I'll do. I have more than you think I have. I have more resources than you even understand that even know. And all you got to do is say, shout. I'll do more. So here's the deal. Think about it. Anything that you've set a limit on, and you might have to think about it. Anything that you maybe have set a limit on or, or you put a boundary on, here's the, here's the New Year's thought for you. It's time to move it. It's time to move it. I got some more stories I don't have time to tell you this morning, but maybe we'll get into it. But you got you got it's time you got to look past it. You ever you ever looked over a fence before? <laughs> maybe your neighbors you looking at you said, "Man, look what they got in their backyard." <laughs> <laughs> you scoping it out. That's what God wants you to do with your faith. You got to start looking. Yeah. Believing's free. That business, whatever it is, or, you know, there, there's no limits. You've got to start taking the limits off. You've got to look past, look beyond it. I mean, look, you know, the house, the car, the finances, the business. God is not limited. You're not limited. And it's time to overcome. That's why you've got to get out of the box. I'm talking about overcoming at that box, that, that, where you're at right now. And it might be good, but guess what? God's gooder. He came to give you life and life abundantly. See, I, I had to reset my limits. 
Well, what's, that, what's what I mean? I mean, I, I, had to, I had to reset. And when he said, that's the way you do me, I thought, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Got to reset something here. Okay, I thought I was here. I thought I'm, you know, I'm having to reset. And I'm constantly, now this is a hard, this is, I'm constantly resetting my limits because God will do something. And I'm like, oh, man. I sure wasn't expecting that. But I know it was him. And I'm, whoo, time, time, to, time to reset the limits here. Whoo, thought I was pushing my faith out there, but, but, but he's saying, you got to be like Buzz Conroy. I mean, no, Buzz Lightyear. Not, I don't know who Buzz Conroy is. <laughs> <laughs> to infinity and beyond, right? I mean, come on. It's beyond. That's, a, that's Ephesians 3.20. <laughs> I think Buzz Conroy was just a name I'd call my kid. You're Buzz Conroy. <laughs> So, the, so here's the deal. i gotta, I got to stop. The big question is, how do I move boundaries? How am I going to get out of the box in life? How do I move the boundaries in my family? How do I move the boundaries of ministry? Well, that's the, that's the message for the New Year's kickoff. That's where we're going from here. How? Everybody say how. Amen. Did you learn something this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the truth that sets captives free. And Lord, I thank you that there's some mindsets that are going to be freed up. There's going to be people that are going to get beyond where they are because that's the will of God, to flourish. Like the palm trees, you said in your word, if we'll delight ourselves in the, in the word, we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water and we'll flourish. We're flir- you, you gave us the picture, those that are planted in the house of God, they'll flourish like the palm tree. There's some of you here, if you'll go ahead, you haven't made up your mind yet, but if you'll go ahead and decide, you know, I'm going to get planted in a church, 2015. I'm, this is a good one, by the way. You just get planted right here. I'm going to get planted. You'll, flir- you'll begin to flourish. That's the reason a lot of people don't flourish. And they're Christians. They're, they're not flourishing like they could because they're not planted. you got to get planted. That's just the word. I'm just saying by the Spirit there. you got to get planted. Plant yourself. There's something, some situations job-wise. You, you know, you, you, there's, there's, a, there's a, a stability there. Some of you, I'm speaking by the Spirit here all of a sudden here. There's some of you, you need to get, wh- where you begin to break out is get some stability in your life. Stability. Everybody say stability. Whoo, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for the truth. Thank you for, Lord, what you're doing. This new year is going to be really good. Even as we've prayed about it in our, in our all-church prayer times, we'll be praying tonight, 5 o'clock, right here in the auditorium. If you want to come join us, come pray out, pray out, part of the, pray out your new year. Pray about January. Pray about February. Pray about some things that you need to do. But when we were praying recently about it, I think I mentioned it, I saw it was like when we hit the 31st on the 1st, it's like a wall. There's like a, it's like a line, and we step over, and it's good. Something good's going. Something good's happening. Hallelujah. And I believe this is part of what God's directing us. He, the, remember Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit's saying. I'm not just making this up here this morning. This, everything I've given you is principles from the Word. And he's saying, hear what the Spirit is saying. He said, well, Pastor, what's, 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 what's happening? What's the Spirit saying? Yeah, you just heard it. For us, anyway, whether that's for everybody else or not, but for us, right here. Because I give an account for you, for your souls, and where you're going, and what's happening in your life, and are you growing, and are you developing? That's the key. So, Lord, we can, again, we just thank you. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven and say, I'm going to receive what heaven has for me. Hallelujah. Lord, come on, just praise him for it right now. Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We're stretching beyond the borders, beyond the boundaries. We're breaking barriers. Thank you, Lord. We're getting out of, out of boxes and limitations. Hallelujah. That either we've said or that some of you, the devil's trying to, be, he's been working so hard to keep you in the box, keep you where you are, keep you confined, keep you contained. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm breaking you forth. I'm bringing you out. Hallelujah. And when you go out, you're going into something better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the better. We thank you for the good. And there's principles, Lord, that you're going to show us to help us to move into what you have for us. Hallelujah. If we'll release our faith, if we'll, if we'll act on the word, that's the key. Stand on the promises. Act on the word. Hallelujah. Stay full. Guard your heart. Coming into this new year, start, start, look, review. Take an inventory. What you've been doing, what you've been watching, what you've been putting in your heart, what's going in, because that's what's going to be coming out. Maybe you need to adjust some things. There'll be a lot of things that we'll talk about coming up. I'm going to be showing you. I'm by the, by the, Best I know how, and as the Spirit's leading us, showing you how to break out of that box. 
break out of that, that mindset that maybe you've been dealing with. And I'm not saying it's been bad necessarily, but again, there's things that God will, he'll just, because, of he, because he's good, hallelujah, he'll show you. He'll show you what you need to do. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Now with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here this morning, we always like to give an invitation for those that maybe don't know Jesus. The Bible said in 1 John 5, 4 again, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. If you've never been born of God, listen, that's your start. You got to get out of the box of the world. The, it's a dark box. And come on into the kingdom of light. What an expand. The kingdom is constant. Is, and think about it, just expansion. The spirit causes enlargement. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm not saved. And I want to be, I want, I want to be born again. Just like Jesus told that man, Nicodemus. He said, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom. He can't experience the kingdom. Listen, if you've never been born again, asking Jesus into your heart, be the Lord and Savior of your life, would you lift up your hand real high right now? If that's anybody in here like that, we want to pray for you this morning. Give you that opportunity to make Jesus your Lord. Anybody like that this morning? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't see any hands going up. Maybe you've, maybe you've just slipped out of fellowship. You've been born again, but you just... Uh, it's been a rough year, and you've kind of been doing your own thing, and you're here by accident this morning. I don't know. Maybe somebody visited. You don't know Jesus, or, or you just need to get your heart right with him. If that's you, lift up your hand real high this morning. We're going to pray for you. Anybody like that? Pastor, pray for me. I need to get my heart right with Jesus. I need his forgiveness. I need his cleansing power working in my life, if that's you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, well, I don't see any hands going up, so that means everybody is saved. Right? If you're happy and you know it. Amen. Hallelujah. Left foot connected to the ankle bone. That means you got a part. You got a place in the body. Amen. Find your place. Hallelujah. It's going to be good. Woo, I'm excited about where we're going. Amen. Did you get something out of the word this morning? Well, it's part of that stirring things up, it's praying things out. Mr. Denise nice got a few announcements for you before you go. Listen, here's part of our, let me just say this before I let you go. Our, our vision for this year, it has been, we started it really part of, even with uh, Pablo, what I began to pray about last May. Uh, I, I'm, I believe that, that God's wanting to do some big things right here. So we have a vision to reach people and, uh, and touch people and, and we're, we're not going to stay the same. We never will. Uh, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll just. But our, our goal here by the end of next year, 2015 in December, is to, if, if, if God has us here in this location, to have two services, 500 people coming into this place. I just, just a, that's just a number that I'm asking God for. Amen. Because I believe it's a good number. Amen. I believe he wants us to help people. So I'm believing God for 500 people. I said, Lord, I want 500 people. Thank you, Lord, for 500 people. How many agree with me for 500 people? Amen. That we're teaching the Word of God. We're discipling. We're helping kids, everybody. I'm talking about right here. If we're here in this location, if we're here, things are, things are happening fast. If we're here, stripes is back on the table. Just let you know, be praying. Hallelujah. That means we're, we're real close. Selling this corner down here. Highway's coming through. There's a lot fixing to happen. So y'all pray for, pray for wisdom for the pastor. Hallelujah. And we're making some good, good, wise, godly decisions. And, uh, but anyway, so, but if we're here operating two services, I mean, there's a lot. That, that takes everybody's part. But here's, here's how you get to 500. Y'all wonder how you get to 500 people? You just reach one family, one person. You just reach one person. See, that we, we got enough in here right now. We double. You just, God, give me one. Give me one. How many can, how many can, how many can put your faith on one? Think about it. Every, every single one of us in here just said, all right, I'm going to get me one. I don't care if they have to sit with me, try to buy them lunch, whatever. Get one person. If they're not saved, then you get them saved. Just go over there. Yo, you say, you go, you, got, you go to church. I'm not talking about bringing somebody from some other church. Now, if they want to come and visit, that's fine. But if they got a home church, we're talking about people that don't go to church. People that aren't saved, I mean, that means you got to get bold, right? Everybody say boldness on the church. But if every single one of us, whether it's a family member, or a friend, or whatever, somebody that you work with, if you just reach one person, we'll have 500 easy. 
So we can do it. See, think, see sure, this is the box here. And I'll probably get to this, but remember the people in Genesis 11? They said, we're going to build a tower, make a name for ourselves. God had to come down and break up the whole language. Bust them, he said, because, because there's nothing they can't do. They all speak in the same thing. They all speak in the same thing. I mean, if we all speak in the same thing, guess what's going to happen with here? There's nothing we can't accomplish. Nothing we can't do. And really, the numbers are not so much that, but I mean, that's just something we put our faith on. But, but when it came to Gideon's numbers, God said, no, you got too many. You ought to get rid of about half of them people right there. You only need 300. So tell everybody that's afraid, go home. Right? <laughs> so, praise God. Did you learn something today? Amen. Well, everybody say, just one. It's my job, just one. I mean, just think, if that one person that you reached this year, one person that you got in church, they begin to flourish, what would happen in their, in their family's lives, and their friends' lives, and they begin to get a hold of the same thing? Amen. And Jesus is coming soon, so that's one good reason to do it. Get you some rewards in heaven. All right, I'm going to let you go. Miss Denise has a few announcements, and then, you, and then you're out of here. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday night. Okay, you guys can stand to your feet. Are you ready to break out of your box? Amen. I know I am. Well, tonight at 5 o'clock, we're having all church prayer. So if you'd like to come and pray with Pastor Bracken and Miss Donna at 5 o'clock right here, we'll be praying. If you've never come to all church prayer, break out of that box. We invite you to come and join us tonight at 5 o'clock. You are dismissed. Have a blessed week. And I'm coming back to your house.